My goal here is to create an APA format table that correctly displays all of the correlations that you all are seeing right here. This is a table that I just copied and pasted into this Word document from Jamovi. It looks okay, um, but generally this isn't quite an APA format, and I could make this look a little bit better. So what I need to do is I first need to decide kind of how many rows and columns I'm going to eventually need in my table. So first off, every table is going to need a title. So first we need a title. That's going to be one row. Next, I'm going to need to tell the reader what's happening in each of the columns. So I'm going to need a row for that. So column designations, one row. Next, I'm going to need one row for each of the variables that I'm presenting in the correlation table. Here, I've got four correlations. And if you want to see my video on how to run these correlations and how to generate this output, I'm going to link a video below in the description so that you can check that out if you'd like. But right here, I have four variables in my study. So four rows for my four variables. Finally, I need a note at the bottom. So note one row. So now I need to decide how many columns I need. Well, first off, I need to tell the reader what they're seeing. So I at least need a column for all of the dependent variables. So one column for each variable. I shouldn't have said dependent variable. They're just variables there. Then I need a column for each of the variables here going across the top. So I need four columns. And then I always like to present my means and standard deviations for each of these measures. It makes the table a little bit more informative and I can take those values out of the method section or the results section elsewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more columns for mean and standard deviation. So what that means is I need a total of one, two, six, seven rows, and one, five, seven columns. And in fact, a little kind of just a fun fact here, you'll notice that the rows and columns match up. If you always, whenever you make a correlational table, if you present the means and standard deviations and nothing else, no extra columns or things like that, they will always have the same number of rows as columns. And that's just a little fun fact for all of you. It makes it a little bit easier. Once I calculate the number of rows, I automatically also know the number of columns. So I know that this is going to have seven columns and seven rows. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and insert my table now. So I'm going to insert the table. I'm going to click seven in the columns and seven in the rows. And by the way, you can also do this in a very similar way um, using things like Google Sheets. Um, if you don't have Microsoft Word downloaded on your computer, it's a little bit different. But And you can just Google some of the things on how to do this if, if there's certain things that you can't figure out that are based on what I'm doing here in Microsoft Word. Again, it's doable. It just takes a little Googling sometime. And I will make a video eventually on how to do this in Google Drive. The top is going to be the title. So oftentimes what I do is I do table 1 or table 2, table 3, whichever one you're on. And then under that's going to be the title. Now different journals have different formats. I typically leave it in this exact format where it's table 1 with a title that's saying something like correlations, means, and standard deviations among all of the variables in study one or something to that nature. Here I'm going to write the word variable to tell people what they're seeing. Here I'm going to do variable one which was enjoyment of ice cream, two amount of ice cream, three lack of flavor for temperature. 
So those are all of my four variables. And I'm going to then note that this is a mean by an italicized M. And this is standard deviation by italicizing S and D. Next, I'm going to do one. And what that one indicates is the one over here. So it's the first variable enjoyment of ice cream, first variable here. I'm going to do a two, which is corresponding to the amount of ice cream. I'm going to do a three, which is the lack of flavor. And I'm going to do a four, which is the temperature of my ice cream. Then all I need to do is I just need to fill this in. Now, this first box here is the correlation between variable one and variable one. Now, we see here that would normally be equal to 1.00 on the R value just because that's it, the variable correlated with itself. I'm going to go ahead and just put a hyphen there. And I'm going to do that across the diagonal for all of those relationships because, again, this one is just two correlated with variable two. This is variable three correlated with variable three. This is variable four correlated with variable four. And so again, those are all just going to be exactly equal to 1.00. It's not informative at all. And now I can go ahead and fill this out. So I'm going to put 0.45 there. And we don't need the zero in front of it. Jamovi gives you that in the output. We don't actually need that. The rule of thumb is that if the value can go above one, which we know that correlations can take on a value of negative one to positive one, it cannot go above one. So we don't need to put the zero in front of it. Down here, it's going to be negative 0.35, which I got from this value right here. We have negative 0.52 which I got from this value right here. We got negative 0.50, which I got from this value right here. Negative 0.55 coming from here. And 0.59 coming from here. Now next we want to indicate whether these are significant. Now typically I use these exact same designations in my own papers, but we want to tell the reader that they're seeing that. So in italics, I'm going to write the word note, and then I'm going to stop the italics, and I'm going to say that one star is P is less than 0 0.05. Two stars is equal to P is less than 0 0.01. And three stars is equal to P is less than, oops, I'm going to stop the italics less than 0 0.001. So you'll notice all of these P's I've italicized, all non-Greek letters you're going to italicize. So now we've filled out most of this table. All that's left is to get the means and standard deviations. To get those, we can come back here to Jamovi, and what I can do is I can click Exploration, Descriptives, and then I can put all of those variables in as the variables, come down to statistics. I'm, I just unclick all of this stuff. Let's just go with mean and standard deviation because that's what I'm interested in reporting. And we end up getting the values there that I can then report in this table. So I'm going to go ahead and add those values in now. So I'm just going to copy over all of those means and standard deviations. So the first one is amount of ice cream. So I'm actually going to start here. I put those in the wrong order based on my table here. But I have 6.92 and 2.20. And again, I'm coming from right there. We've got lack of flavor, which is 4.15 and 1.15. We have temperature of the ice cream, which is 3.14. Standard deviation, 1.86. And then finally, I'm going to come up to enjoyment. 8.04 and 1.77. So now what we have is a table that looks pretty darn ugly. But we have everything presented that we need to aside from maybe writing in a title. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, means, standard deviations, and correlations between each of the variables in study one. So now I have a table that is filled out, but it looks really, really ugly. So let's go ahead and put it in APA format. First, what we want to do is we want to merge 
all of these cells together so that the title just goes across the whole top of the table. So I'm going to go up here to Layout, and I'm going to click Merge Cells. Already, we're looking better. I'm going to do the same thing for that note at the bottom of the table. So I highlight all of those rows or all of those cells and I click merge again. Already we're looking fantastic. So then I'm going to click this little icon in the top left here. And I'm going to highlight the whole table. Now APA format says that you need to remove the vast majority of your grid lines. As many as you can while still making the table make sense. To remove these, we go to Table Design, we go to Borders, and I always just click No Border to start. Now we always want one border that is under our table title and also under the designation of what each of the columns is representing. So I'm going to do a bottom border, then I'm going to do a top border. So that gives a border that you can see here under the table title and also under all of those column designations. And then finally, I want to add a, row, uh, a border above the note. So I click into there and I again just click that top border. And that goes ahead and puts it across there because again, this was merged across all of those cells there. So now we're looking pretty darn good. It's still slightly ugly to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here and I'm going to then right click and do auto fit. This button is amazing. I'm going to click auto fit to contents. Auto fit to contents. Bam. We are looking great. The last thing I like to do is I like to just highlight all of these and I like to center it all. Some people, what they'll do is align everything on their decimals. That takes a lot of work. I actually prefer to just center everything. I think this table looks great. There's no real APA format guidelines beyond that. The last thing that we need to make sure that we do is to add in these significance, these stars to indicate significance. So what we're seeing is that this one is less than .001. So I'm going to go ahead and put three stars there. And actually what we're seeing is that every relationship in this table is going to need those three stars. So now what we've presented our reader with is a very nice, clean, informative table. We have told the reader the mean and standard deviations of all of our variables in our study, as well as all of the correlations among those. Sometimes what I like to do also is add the reliability of my scale in parentheses right here. So if the reliability of ice cream enjoyment was 0.95, we could add it in there. Eventually I'm going to post a video on how to run reliabilities in Jamovi, but if you don't know how to do those or if you haven't or if it's not relevant to you or if it's just a one item measure like all of these are, they're not going to have a reliability. So you can just add hyphens in there. So there we have APA format correlation tables. If there's a video you'd like me to make, please let me know. Otherwise, make sure to hit that like and subscribe and give me any feedback you have. Have a great rest of your day.